Hello, I'm your host Denise Rojas. Installing solar panels like this to your house can be a lot of fun and it can also be extremely frustrating if you do not know what you're doing. Dan, he's going to be explaining some basic terminology on what you can and cannot do with a system like this one and also open your mind to what the larger solar kits are capable of. pretty cold. I have here a thermoelectric cooler. I'm going to be discussing this process in future videos. Right now I'm just using this to show you the versatility of 12 volt and how the systems with the solar panels can be incorporated into your house. I have three regular car batteries hooked up in parallel. I also have this jumper uh, battery which is also 12 volt. It's hooked up in parallel to it so technically I have four batteries hooked up. The way I have them hooked up is not real pretty. It's not the way you do it for your house. You'd want to get battery leads from an auto supply store. They make them for semi trucks, that sort of thing. And what, what they do is it's just basically the same thing that you'd hook it to your car with, but they allow you to hook them in parallel. So by hooking these batteries in parallel, our voltage is still 12 volt. It doesn't change the voltage. What it does is it, all the batteries, their power draws down equally. So this acts as a giant battery bank, more or less. Now for your house, you'd want to use a deep cycle battery or several deep cycle batteries, preferably the gel ones if they're going to be inside. The fundamental difference between car batteries and deep cycle batteries is that car batteries have more surface area to the cells and they're designed to crank out a lot of amps so you can start your car. Deep cycle batteries, they're usually bigger, spaced out a little bit more and they don't produce the same cranking amps, but they do produce a longer flow of energy. With car batteries, if you drain them all the way down where they're dead, charge them back up again more than 20 or 30 times you'll actually destroy the battery M many batteries just can't handle that deep cycle batteries are designed to do exactly that deep cycle they're designed to be pulled all the way down charged all the way back up so car batteries your car the battery stays fully charged most of the time if you run it down leaving your lights on several times you'll destroy the battery you'll need a new battery so again this is just for to show you the basic setup because it's the same for the batteries so I have the car batteries here now, what I also have is an inverter. This inverter is a 750 watt inverter and I have a four and a half amp electric drill hooked up to it. And what the inverters do is they convert the direct current into alternating current that you can use for your house. Now, this is what's called a modified sign inverter. There are pure sign inverters out there which are actually much better. They give you a better voltage flow. Modified sign inverters are generally a lot cheaper and you can get them in higher power outputs for the price. The major difference between a modified sign inverter like this one and a pure sign inverter, pure sign inverters produce a cleaner energy flow and they can run more complex things like digital clocks, a lot of them can't run off of this. Some computer uh, devices can't run off of this. If you're just running some light bulbs, some compact fluorescence, that sort of thing, or some power tools like this, a modified sign inverter will work for your needs. You're going to notice that this inverter is clamped onto this battery and that's where it's getting its energy from. The solar panels are hooked up to one of the batteries and they will charge the system when nothing's running. These solar panels alone will not run this inverter other than just turn the fan on. If you try to hook any electrical device up to it, it just won't do it. So the batteries give you the, the energy reservoir to run this. The concept's pretty simple. The solar panels charge the batteries throughout the day. You can actually use the power from the batteries as they're being charged. They just won't be charging the batteries. They'll be running directly into whatever you're running. And as you don't use it, when you shut an electrical device off, you'll be just charging the batteries. So these are 45 watt panels, the three of them together. That one adds an additional six watts. So we have a 51 watts roughly. Now this, this drill that I have right here is a four and a half amp drill. That pulls about 500 watts. Yeah, it pulls the voltage down a little bit on there, but if I were to run this for about an hour, two hours, three hours, I would eventually drain all these batteries. So you have to understand that a 500 watt drill versus 50 watts, that's a 10 to one. You lose a little bit in efficiency with the inverter. So you need to charge these 10 times as long as you'd want to run this drill with this one system. That's where linking multiple systems together works. And I've got this panel right here hooked up to it. That's an add-on to this. Um, you can put multiple systems 
basically attach them to your batteries and you're good to go. It's pretty simple. The way that I have my inverter hooked up to our office is I have an extension cord that runs, runs some compact fluorescent lights throughout the day. Basically just supplements our electric bill. Now, you can tie these directly into your electrical panel. I do recommend a skilled electrician to do that for you because it can be a little complicated. It's not that hard to do, but um, it's something that you should definitely have some electrical advice when you do it. One thing that you want to keep in mind is that if you do hook an inverter up like this or one that's not super powerful, you want to make sure that you never plug anything into the outlets like a 10 amp vacuum or anything that pulls a lot of power like a hair dryer because the, this inverter simply won't handle that. It'll just cut off. All inverters have a power cut off to them, so if you overload them, they shut down. If the battery level drops, they'll shut down so you don't get excessively low voltage. Before installing solar in your house, there's a few things you need to consider. First, you have to decide how many watts you're gonna be pulling in a particular area. You can look at most electrical devices and they'll tell you right on it how many watts it pulls, but there's a little gadget called a kilowatt, K-I-L-L-O watt, you can pick them up on eBay for about 20 bucks, you plug them in your outlet, you plug the electrical device in, and it'll tell you exactly how many watts that's pulling. I'm gonna show you some examples of that in action. So see that the, the drill is pulling almost 500 watts. I'm gonna switch this over to amps. And we're gonna see what it pulls. right at 5 amps, which that all works out. Now we're going to see how the voltage, how it holds up to this. Alright, so now we're inside and you can see that this outlet right now has about 118 volts going to it. I'm going to turn this drill on and listen to the difference. You see that the voltage stays at 115 amps. So now we're going to see how many watts it pulls in here. So the watts are about the same. The amps are the same. Most electrical devices will have a label telling you how much energy they use. In this case, this air conditioner uses 930 watts when it's in the cooling mode. With the air conditioning unit on the fan only mode, notice how the watts gradually increase as I increase the fan speed. 181 watts is not a lot for an air conditioning unit, but notice the dramatic increase in power consumption as the cooling unit kicks in. This is a combination of rope lighting and 10 compact fluorescent bulbs that we use to illuminate our office. Pulling just over 230 watts, these lights will run for 10 hours on the system outside. Installing solar to your house can be a lot of fun and I like the approach of going step by step, starting off small and building from there. As most systems, you can just simply add on to it. If you're going to be doing your entire house, take it totally off the grid, you probably want to have a professional installer do it because it can get pretty complicated with when you start running really heavy appliances and that sort of thing. With a simple system like this, it's always a good idea to have a professional electrician help you out with it. Just make sure you do everything safety-wise. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos. The first thing you want to do when deciding how to... The first thing that you want to do when you... The first thing that you want to do when deciding to hook solar to your house is figure out what you're going to be running off of it at 51 watts roughly. Now this drill that I have right here, 